March Madness is about to hit the hardwood in full force, and prior to Selection Sunday, we are joined by Isaac Awasu, a news editor for The Score, who covers the NCAA, who's here to give us everything we need to know about March Madness. I think so great to see you, and thanks for spending your afternoon with us on the Two Man Advantage podcast. Hey, my, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Heading into the tournament, uh, Kentucky has become the first team since the 1975-76 Indiana Hoosiers to go undefeated undefeated. So what makes this group of wild wildcats so successful and unique? Really, they they play with a certain sense of eliteness on defense. They're long and physical. Three guys in their team are at least six foot ten. You have two guys who might be drafted in the top three of the draft this year in Willie Colley Stein and Carl Anthony Towns. You have the Harrison twins who are potential first round picks to lottery picks. You got a team that's virtually top five in every category that doesn't have to do with offense. So really they're good at holding their opponents from scoring. The teams average 35.1% on field goals off the ground against them. So really, if you want to score against them, you have to pick your spots. And tell me, uh, who do you think will arise to be their toughest competition uh, this March? You know what? It's anywhere between either Duke or Wisconsin. I think they have the adequate amount of playing with height and they have the guard play. Obviously, Jalil Okafor is probably the best player in college altogether. He moves with the ball, moves very well with it, and he can pass. And he has the guards to play well with it. You know, Quinn Cook, Tyus Jones. Additionally, you have Wisconsin with Frank Kaminsky. He's probably the most fundamentally sound big man in the country right now. And he might get Trayvon Jackson back, playing along with Bronson Koenig, who's looked really good recently. It's going to be a good situation for those two teams. And tell me, outside of Kentucky, what uh, sto- uh, storylines will you be keeping uh, an eye on as uh, March Madness gets underway? I think the most interesting thing would be actually Notre Dame. They're probably the most slept on team in the whole tournament. They've beaten teams that are good. They have an underrated situation where they're playing the SEC. They've beaten Duke. They've beaten Louisville. They've beaten North Carolina. They've beaten Michigan State. Jerry and Grant might be one of the best guards that you've never heard of. You have Zach Auguste, who can move up and draft boards with a good tournament himself. And tell me, uh, what uh, teams will you be keeping an eye on to uh, play the role of Cinderella uh, uh, during the tournament? Well, I think everyone's looking to see what SMU does, but it's kind of hard to call them Cinderella when, you know, people are watching them. Valparaiso, they looked really good. Historically, they are Cinderella, and they showed grit. They beat Green Bay to win their Horizon League. But one team that I'm really watching about and a lot of people are looking at is Wofford. They might be the Cinderella of everybody. They play in the Southern Conference, which is in the SEC, but the Southern Conference. And they've beaten a Cinderella twice this year. Well, last year's Cinderella, Mercer, twice this year. So look out for them. And in terms of the Big Ten country, where we're located, the biggest storyline this season in this conference has been Maryland. So can you tell me what has Mark Curtin done to turn that program around? And uh, how do you think they'll fare in the tournament? Well, they lost eight players, but they got a big step up from Dez Wells. He's been electric from three-point range. He shoots around 500%. I mean, 550%, sorry. So he's been phenomenal. He might be a better shooter than Jerry and Grant, who I mentioned earlier. Additionally, freshman Melo Tremble might be the best player on that team. Might be one of the best freshman guards in the nation outside of D'Angelo Russell. They commit to defense, and they defend the three-point shot very well. And tell me, what teams will you uh, be watching, and what teams have to perform well uh, during their conference tournament season to make a positive impression on the committee? I think Utah. Utah has a tough Pac-12 tournament ahead of them. They got the first round by, but they ended the season really rough, losing to Washington and upset, being upset earlier by Oregon. So, I mean... Losing three straight or three out of the last five will have people wondering what's going on with them. They remain in the AP polls just because everybody else has been pretty bad, but they need to rebound really well. And tell me, uh, headed back to the Big Ten, uh, Wisconsin has a ton of veteran leadership on their team. And as you mentioned earlier, 
Frank Kaminsky has been a leader for the Badgers, and Bo Ryan just keeps winning. So what makes the uh, Badgers so consistent, and what will be their key to success during the tournament? They're efficient. They shoot like 48% from the floor, which is crazy, especially when you consider that. I mean, not everybody is a forward on that team. They have a lot of good guard play. The best thing about them, like I said earlier, is Trayvon Jackson appears to be coming back for the tournament. He'll make the team so much better. And Bronson Keenick, the point guard who's played in his replacement, he's played really well. So if you have those two on the same floor, it's going to be really good. And they don't really have a lot of turnover. A lot of guys stayed on the team, so it's a lot of experience. And, it, and in terms of Michigan State, uh, Tom Izzo doesn't have his strongest group this year, but he's a veteran in March. So what is the the, uh, the Spartans' biggest challenge will be this March, and how far do you think this uh, group of Spartans will go? They haven't been able to replace Adrian Payne. So, you know, losing that presence in the post makes it hard for the wing players. The majority of the work is coming from the wing, but in this year's tournament, a lot of the best teams are playing with big guys. You know, you have the Wisconsin's, you have the Kentucky's, you have the Dukes. So they need to have that kind of presence in mind and be able to rebound with that situation, literally rebound in the post. It's been a bad year where they have no real credible wins. So they need to find a way to just shock a team, literally punch them in the face and show them that they were here. And finally, Isaac, who do you think will be in this year's Final Four? And who will you think will eventually uh, claim the title as national champs in 2015? Well, I mean, when we're talking top, you know, final four, we're talking really just me speaking up a hunch. So I, I'm obviously going to go with Kentucky. I think that they have that certain it factor, and these guys just don't know how to lose. They've shown the determination. I like Duke. I think Coach K's got his team hitting at the right time. Wisconsin, you can't count on experience. And the one team that might be a little bit more slept on, probably the most slept on potential number one seed, I'm going to say Villanova. They dominated the Big East. They have a walking double-double and Daniel Chufu, and I mean, he's a beast. Six foot 11 with a seven foot three wingspan. I like that team. All right, Isaac, we thank you for your time this afternoon and for joining us on the True Madden Advantage podcast, and we wish you a very exciting March Madness season. You too, buddy. Enjoy your time. Thanks for having me.